Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is our Sunday School lesson for October the 25th, 2020. And the topic is Love Divine, the most excellent way. We in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. And what we're going to be doing is by the end of this lesson, we will define Paul's understanding of love as the apex of the spirit-led life. We're going to appreciate love as a motivation to share our God-given gifts. And then when we go out into this world, we're going to act in love when sharing our God-given gifts. Our outline, love is superior. That's verses 1, 2, 3. Our characteristics of love, verses 4 through 7. And our love endures, verses 8 through 13. But let's pause for a moment of prayer. Thank you, God, for allowing us to study another lesson. We pray that we will learn something new about divine love. And we pray for those who are sick and shut in. Pray that they will be healed by the power of Jesus Christ. As we go into the le to this lesson, we pray for understanding. We pray for wisdom. And we hope that something will be gained by others about the word of God. Amen. Okay. Again, I really thank you for joining in. And uh, uh, we again uh, uh, continue with uh, the most important part of any lesson is the Word of God. So I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 13. And I hope you have your Bibles open and you can keep up with me. Okay. I'm reading from the King James Version. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 13, written by Paul. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not clarity, charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountain and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffered long, and it is kind. Charity endeth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It does not have itself behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Verse 7. Bear, beareth all things. Believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. But charity never faileth. But where there is be prophecy, they shall fail. And where there be tongues, they shall cease. And where there be knowledge, it should vanish away. It should vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And the last verse, verse 13. And now 
about it. Faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. May God's word be blessed. And we will now go on into a little bit of a background. Not a lot, but a little. You see what is happening. Paul wrote the first Corinthians while he was living and ministering in the city of Ephesus. And Paul received a letter from the Corinthian church expressing confusion about marriage, about bodily resurrection, about living in a pagan society. But when Paul decided he was going to write them back, he decided I will write them and encourage them to live a life of holiness. Now what was happening is there was a misunderstanding about spiritual gifts. And so it is today, we misunderstand our spiritual gift. So I'm gonna take you back to chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians verses four through seven. In those verses, it says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same the same law. And there are differences of operation, but it's the same God which worketh all and all in them. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. And this is very important to profit with us, which means to profit the church, to profit the church. God gives each Christian a charismatic gift or some enabling grace for the benefit of the whole church. That's important. He gives us these gifts for the benefit of the whole church. No one who becomes a Christian is overlooked. No believer should ever say he cannot do anything meaningful for the Lord. No gift and these are important things to remember no gift is better than another at corinth however and some churches today some members were so carnal that they tried to make status symbols out of their charismatic gifts and especially those who spoke in tongues it is in first corinthians chapter 10 verses 8 no chapter 12 verses 8 through 10 that paul gave some of the uh charismatic gifts for example he he he, he recited uh, uh, talked about nine of them like wisdom knowledge faith gifts of healing working of miracles prophecy the ability to distinguish between spirits, then tongues, and then interpretation of tongues. Now, trust me, these are not all, all the charismatic gifts. There are many others. But this gift of speaking in tongues, being better than other gifts, is really why Paul wrote chapter 13. You see, that's why we went back to chapter 12. He really wrote it because of these Corinthian Christians felt that their speaking in tongues were much better than all the others. So Paul says, what I got to do, I got to emphasize what is called love, divine love, agape love. We all probably know that there are other kinds of what? Love. There is the love that you speak of called eros. There's the love, which is a sensual kind of love. There's the love that is called um, philia, which is brotherly love. But what Paul was trying to get them to see is to explain the word divine love, godly love. Really, I learned that when the King James Version, when he mentions 
charity, it is understood as refers to a word called from cherish. It comes from the word cherish. To show charity to someone is to show that you cherish them. This charity is what Paul is speaking about. Now, Paul does not know, and we do not know, how it is that God decided that he is love. And this is the kind of love that cherishes everybody. In the Bible, we call this also agape love. It's a divine love. It's a commitment of the will to cherish and uphold other people. This is the form of love that is always used when we describe God's love, agape, not eros and not philia. Okay, let's continue on and get into our outline. Now, taking a moment, what we've just done is giving you what we call a little background. Now we're going to go right into explaining verses 1 through 13. Let's start off with love is superior. And let's look at verses 1 through 3. Now, remember, just reviewing, Paul says, look, i got to get these Corinthians persons straight now because they think that that's speaking in tongues as it is today. They think that that is superior. So listen to what verse 1 says. If I had the gift, and this is in another version, the Living Bible, if I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages, tongues, without learning them, and if I could speak in every language that all the heaven and the earth knew about, the key to it is, but didn't have love, I would be only making noise just making noise oh i can speak so well so these persons that we are talking about they could speak in tongues but if it's not in vain it, it it is in vain if you don't go it with love verse 2 says he continues if i had the gift of prophecy and knew all about what was going to happen that's what prophecy does in the future, and I knew everything about everything, but did not love others, what good would it do? And even if I had the gift of faith so that I could speak to a mountain, say, move mountain, and on a move, it would still be worth nothing, nothing at all without love. The gift of prophecy or preaching it's mere entertainment. That's all it is, just entertainment, unless you're doing it with love. The gift of intellectual accomplishment without love leads to contempt. It leads to snobbery. It leads to false pride. Because none of these gifts edifies the body of Christ or pleases others, pleases God, unless it is done in love. Verse three, now if I gave everything I have to the poor people, and if I even burned myself alive for preaching the gospel, but didn't have love, it would be no value. Although the others would receive what I gave them. This, sex, sex, sac this self-sacrifice would be great for them, but it wouldn't do anything for my spiritual maturity. So, the spirit of love must be present in the giver. The Christians in Corinth were missing the motive. And the goal of their gifts, they didn't understand why God had given them that, these gifts. But love says it all. Paul was saying, the focus and the end of gifts is always love. The gifts are not, are not, are not for your own sake. They are not for you to boast about. 
The gifts are to be effectual and love must be guide, must guide these gifts. Now we get to verses four through seven, part two of our lesson. The characteristics of love. So what Paul does now in verses four through six, he gives some not what love is not. And then in verse seven, he sort of sums it up. And this is the way it goes in verses four through six. He says, love suffers long, love is kind. Love is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudge and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. Love, and he's speaking of love as if, as if it's a person. Love is never glad about injustice, but rejoices in heaven. It rejoices whenever the truth wins out. So when I looked at this, I started looking at it from the way I look at love. Love does not get angry at another success. Love gives because love loves to give, not so much because it can't, that love can give. Love is not puffed up, self-focused, big-headed. Love uses tact and politeness. And then we avoid hurting people's feelings. Love is not self-centered. It is not self-assertive. Love does not fly off the handle, lose its temper. Love does not get pleasure out of the misfortune of others. Love desires the best for others. And then Paul looks at, verse, we look at verse seven and Paul says, well, let me just sum it up for you. He says, love at all things, Love believeth all things, love hopeth all things, and love endureth all things. Paul is saying everything that love does should be for God's sake, for God's sake. Paul is saying that ne love never tires when, when, he, when he uses the word all things, all things, you never get tired of loving. Most of us will do some loving, but after a while we get tired. But for this agape love, you got to keep on going. Now for part three of the lesson, love endures, verses eight through 13. These verses are what I call a conclusion. He sort of concluded what he wants to say. In verse eight, he begins to tell the people about love again. He said, love is eternal. It never comes to an end. But the charismatic gifts that the person are given, they will end. This is important. Prophecies will end. Tongues will end. Knowledge will end. They'll pass away. The gifts are given for such an age as this, for the present age. But these gifts are only temporary. They are temporary. Paul is saying that when the next edge era comes, when Christ comes, takes us to what? Heaven, when he comes back, takes us to heaven. Paul is saying these gifts will no longer be needed when the next age occurs. We won't need them. In verses nine and 10, he sort of explains it with a uh, what we call a metaphor he says and you you've heard it heard me say it in verses 9 and 10 he says now we know so live even with our special gifts and the preaching of those most gifted is still so poor just listen but when we have been made perfect and complete then the need for these inadequate special gifts will come to an end and they will disappear. I don't care how much and how well you teach, you preach, you sing, it's imperfect. It's imperfect. There's no perfect sermon. There's no perfect lesson. 
Paul is saying we can only preach and prophesy in an imperfect and partial way. They are temporary. But when we get to heaven, praise God, we will not need such things because we will experience love there. So what Paul is doing, he's furthering his explanations to these Corinthians who think that that gift is so great, just so great. And then in verse 11, Paul continues with more metaphor. He gives a metaphor of the maturity of spiritual human beings. In other words, human beings become spiritual as they grow. So when he said this, when I was a child, I spoke and I thought and I reasoned as a child does. But when I became a man, my thoughts grew beyond those of my childhood. And now I have put away childish things. But what is Paul trying to say to them? Paul is really saying that there is an appropriate age to use your spiritual gift. The present age, right now. These gifts were given to the church for this age to function the church, to keep them going, to give us things that we need here. The present age, of course, will no longer in the next age when Jesus returns and he takes Christians to heaven, there will be no longer need of these spiritual gifts. And then he gives another analogy. He says, look, in verse 12, he says, in the same way we can see and understand only a little bit about God now, that's all we can do, just a little bit. It's just like you looking into a mirror. And when you look into a mirror, and during those times, they would look in a mirror and they would see the mirror is dull. They couldn't see things well during that time. The mirrors were not so great. They were dull, as we would call them, poor mirror. And then he says, but someday we are going to see Jesus in his completeness, face to face. Right now, all that we know at this present time, all that we preach, teach, sing, and do all these things, it is definitely blurry. I don't care how well you do it, it's not complete. Just as clearly as God sees your heart, you're trying, you'll never be able to see until you get to heaven. In other words, now we have partial knowledge, but this is temporary of our charismatic gifts. When Jesus returns and he makes his dwelling place among his people, we will see him face to face. So verse 13 sort of puts, puts, puts it right where we would get. It. He said, and now, and now, abide it, faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these three is charity, is charity. These are what we call three graces that's given to all people who are Christian. All Christians will have the faith, the hope, and the charity. Verse 13 is saying, it is very childish to esteem our gifts so high Although he's saying Christians must remember that the gift is not the measure of your maturity. You have faith. Well, what's faith? Faith that we are saved according to the grace of God. We have hope. Hope we wait upon the return of Jesus and the coming of the reign of God. All of this is due to God's love for us. So when Jesus comes, the reign of God is fulfilled. When this happens, we will have no need for faith. We will have no need for hope. What we will have when we get to heaven is love. Okay? So let's take a moment and sort of summarize. Verses 1 through 3, love is superior. No matter what you say, you have all your spiritual gifts. 
You have what some people might say, I have two or three. They are definitely only what? Temporary. And they are definitely nothing, nothing without love. And that's the kind of love that is God's love. We should minister our gifts in love just to fulfill a, we should never just do our, give our gifts just to say that in the church, in our church, we have an obligation to do this and that, but without love, they are nothing. We also looked at some characteristics of love. We also looked at love, uh, love bears, love believes, love hopes, and it endures. And this is the kind of agape love that we are talking about. So as, as we also went through the fact that the, the greatest thing about all our gifts is the fact that they are not complete. They will never complete. They are imperfect, imperfect. So here we go. What shall we do with a lesson like this? I'd like to speak to you personally. Accept your gift, use it well, but don't get puffed up with your gift. Don't feel that your charismatic gift that God has given you is better than someone else. If you do your gift, in, you perform your gift in the church, don't feel that yours is better than anyone else's. Whatever gift you have, if you don't do anything else, do it with love. If you sing, sing with love. If you preach, preach with love. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything to God. I thank you so much for listening. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like to pray that this lesson has been helpful to you. And if you are not a Christian, I'm praying that you will know that in Romans 10, 9 through 10, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if you prayed that prayer with me, and you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, find yourself a God-fearing teaching church. Our church here in Newport News, First Baptist Church, Demi, will be glad to guide you in your spiritual growth. We will also be able to guide you to any church of your choice. Hope to see you next time with our Sunday School lesson. God bless you and have a good week.